Rachel Jankovic. I'm Becca Merkel. We're sitting in the blowy rain. And yeah. if Becca would turn the windshield wipers on, we would be able to see you some very scenic it? cows. Yeah, they're kind of frolicking, actually. Frolicking in the rain. Look, there's a stampede. They're actually wow, like... they actually they are. are having a little <laughs> hustle. I, I said, wonder why. I said, oh, they're frolicking. That's when there was one. And then they're all just like, hey, <laughs> hey, we'll come too. And now yeah. they're all running the muck. Well, now that you're all up on what's happening with the cows. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, two episodes ago, when we just lingered on the topic of cloth napkins, I felt some nagging, stop it, Rachel, stop it, no one cares thought. Okay. Then the next episode, we hit on the cloth napkins again. (laughs) And the part that I think is really intriguing is that everyone around me keeps bringing up their cloth napkin concerns since that time, which made me feel like maybe we should just open up a new podcast about (laughs) cloth napkins, like just a weekly focus on Uh Uh on, uh, the cloth napkins. But the praise report is that since our last napkin episode I was able I sewed napkins out I made 15 napkins well out well of a fabric that's been lingering in my life where I do, this this opens up another theory of mine it's a fabric work because it's on the horizon now when we move into our new house mm-hmm. it's on my mental like I don't want to pack a bunch of good intentions no. from times past no it's like there's stuff that you want to just Yep. fish or cut bait with yep. this is a pretty piece of fabric that I have had for a while and because it's pretty I have not this is a, my other dispatched it well the yep. prettier it is the less you want to just do something with it Yeah. but the problem is then you end up you end up treasuring it while yep. you grow out of liking it <laughs> this fabric I still like it's, it's pretty but the thing that's interesting to me is that they've done that with other things where you're like I love this so hard that I want to only use it it for something good or I love the idea of it you know whatever it is you think this is so good that I have to find the ultimate destiny for it but then there isn't one and you don't do it and Mm -hmm. then what happens as you all may know already is that someday you get it out and you're like and this is one of my most prized possessions and then you look (laughs) at it and you're like but why yeah. Why did yeah. I Well um I have a I have a particular trouble with one of my most prized possessions because it is a really beautiful Rachel's texting right now. I'm so sorry, I'm, I'm just, coordinating a carpool situation to a bowling party. Mm-hmm. Well I like unpack my heart over here about my most prized possession. <laughs> What's your most prized <laughs> possession? No, it's a tablecloth I bought in Paris, and I spent a way, way big lot of money on it. Because it was the first time we'd gone to Paris, I had a little chunk of money that I had set aside that I was like, I'll use that in Paris. I'll get something in Paris. And then um, we were only there for like three days, and we had this incredible experience because um, there was a girl that had been a foreign exchange student with Ben's family when he was like in junior high and so and she was French and they kind of kept in touch and so we were going to be flying into Paris and he was like we should say hi to her so anyway she was super excited came down to the to the airport to greet us and then as soon as we were there she was like you're not going to the hotel you're coming to stay with me and she had married in the intervening times I think one of the wealthiest men in France like crazy worst luck ridiculous and takes us to her flat which is stunningly beautiful it's the top floor of right in the center of Paris like the Arc Mm -hmm. Arc de Triomphe is right out the window and you know it was amazing turns out they own the whole building they're serving us wine for lunch from their chateau in Bordeaux (laughs) you know it was ridiculous 
But she then undertakes... It just, Becca got in the mood and bought herself a yeah, really well, expensive no, no, no. tablecloth. She undertakes to show us Paris, but she has a great disdain for tourists. So she wouldn't take us anywhere that tourists might go. So basically, all we did was eat. We just went from restaurant to <laughs> restaurant to restaurant. And it was amazing, but it was like we would finish off like a four-hour lunch and go home for a quick nap before we went, we went out for dinner. <laughs> like, it was really funny. <laughs> And then every time we would suggest maybe we ought to look at, you know, something, she would do this, like, very sort of, Ugh, you are not tourists. And we're like, well, we kind of are, though. But anyway, then, um, all to say, I had about 27 minutes to shop because it was in this, this brief shining moment where we were between meals. Yeah. And I saw this tablecloth and it was incredible and I loved it dearly and I was like, well, that'll be what I bought in Paris and I spent all my all my monies on it. <laughs> and it was I don't know how much I paid for it, but it was probably like I feel like it was like 4 or 500 bucks for this Woo! Tip. Yeah. <laughs> but I was sort of like So that at that point you really yeah. are going to have to put the thing under plastic. Yeah. yeah. You're going to be like you yeah. you shall not. But it is leave so a mark. Oh, beautiful. And I still love it, but I have never one time I don't think ever used it on my table for a meal. It's really bad. And no, you just need a little it's clear so coat pretty. on that. Yeah. Yeah, clear coat. Have it laminated. Um you yeah. could scotch guard it. Oh, but it would ruin it. It's such a beautiful fabric. It's like... But scotch guard doesn't make a textural difference. Well, I feel like it's I'm not of... sure that I would do that, but I'm just telling it's you, It's like you a could. very polished cotton is yeah. sort is of the Bouvelet? texture. Yeah, is it Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bouvelé is one that gets me a lot. It's amazing. Yeah. It's so well, pretty. anyways, it's it's good to know anyway, that Becca owns one it's, prized tablecloth. It's tucked off in a yeah. cupboard that no one's ever this seen. This is it. I've said it before in here. This is my big and this was also part of me just making the napkins. Mm -hmm. Is that it's that thing about let your ideas die with dignity because sometimes True. something just haunts True. you. Like for years you could go about being like, Oh, this is the fabric I could make napkins mm -hmm. out of. Mm -hmm. And then you just keep on telling yourself that yeah. but you never actually take action no so i was pleased to have taken the action how'd you have a with a faux mitered corner for people who can't stop what else they're doing <laughs> i did a, a faux mitered corner <laughs> did you just angle fold it under and much. keep going <laughs> pretty dang much what i actually did really elaborate is I angle folded it under when I got to the corner. Yeah. No, if you cut a tiny triangle out of the corner. Cut a tiny snip off the end so you okay. get some of the bulk out of it. Okay. Fold that part in. Mm -hmm. And then when you double you fold it in just like a hem allowance amount and then you double fold, you know, cause, because the hems I was putting on this thing you don't want it, you don't think I pinned anything or ironed it. I don't, well, I iron, but I don't pin. I believe in ironing and pinning both, but not when I'm sewing 15 napkins real mm. fast. So, okay. I just double folded it in and you know that worked fine. There you go. I mean, there I wasn't trying to make I wasn't trying to make a $500 <laughs> napkin set. I was just trying to make some that we'll use, you know. And is it bringing you joy? Yeah, I think it bring me joy that I did That's that. Good. That I That's acted great. on it. Okay, so we had some questions. All right. And I was like, I will endeavor. One <laughs> I thought would be really good of us to touch on because I know we're both passionate about this issue <laughs> and we have tons and tons and tons to say potty training your children oh i'm joking about us being passionate about it i thought for how many kids we have between us mm -hmm. you're gonna come away with precious few suggestions <laughs> for how to potty train them and yet and yet all of our children all have them. been successfully potty trained. we have a hundred percent success yeah, rate 12 <laughs> 12 kids <laughs> using the toilets as expected of adults. And, uh, but I think that the, I don't know. I just thought, I don't feel like we're really a great resource for, for that. No, you're right. Because I have a few thoughts, I guess. Okay. Well, give them to me. One is that potty training was the first part of mothering for me with my oldest that I was actually like, I hate this. 
<laughs> not like I mean this is a task in parenting that I genuinely do not like okay but it got a lot better when I recognized that was a pitfall in my own life and just realizing that it it was not helpful like I think it was much harder for me to do that first time than it was well later. I'll tell you a secret that I hate and mm. that is those little the little potties oh, that sit know. off yeah. in the corner of the room by themselves I <laughs> I just hate those yeah I think that that's a big head fake for people because what I can't figure out is why not have our children just use the main That's potty. The I, I like the yeah. flushing feature. Yeah. It's actually, <laughs> yes. The flushing yes. feature is a thing that I admire about toilets. And, and I think the problem is, <laughs> is when you feel like, you know, you don't want them to just fall in. <laughs> But at the same Nor time... Nor do you want them to be incapacitated when they see a toilet that will be standard issue everywhere. But I just... So, like, like, when you find yourself packing it in your purse to take a porty potty no, with no, you... No, no, no. Oh, boy. Mm. I guess my point is, make, like, it's important to get the kids thinking that a real potty is the plan. Like, a full toilet is I what think we're here I, for. I outgrew myself as a... In, in my spiritual journey of potty training, I outgrew the little plastic Trainer ones. toilets. Trainer yeah. toilets. I have to say that another thing I outgrew in my mothering was changing tables. Because it just was like, what am I doing? I changed the baby everywhere. Later on in my parenting journey, I would change the baby on the couch or on our bed yeah. or on the... Yeah. Wherever you happen to be. And so then I would have a changing table in their bedroom to put their clean clothes on. When well, I didn't have, when they're like napping, so you sneak in and set a stack of stuff on it, but it's not fine. put away. I, I used a changing that. table for all of them because that's where I stored all of the diapers and wipes and everything. So I might yeah, not use but it I for actually, changing I all the time. But I actually kept wipes and diapers in, in a drawer in the living room. That's and also clever. in the bedroom. And I just had them everywhere. So. You're right, because you actually have those those wipes are flying around they're your everywhere life. in your life yeah. yeah so anyways the we had that i just think with kids potty training the the problem is when you start too early or your own pride is invested in it in some way rather than i it became something that i actually enjoyed with the kids that they were like learning their own independence and feeling proud of themselves and mm-hmm. you know like I it but does if not if you're into like potty training your four month old you're gonna have to not take a use, different level of hype but you also can't <laughs> use the big potty in those times you're just gonna no, have but to I buy bought a seat I bought the small seat that you could leave beside the potty for when someone was sure, sure. you know like the an insert sure for especially in the then, early days when they were just like, getting comfortable. And then I have to say, we gave, I would give them M&Ms treats. Or something. I'm a believer in pull ups because that was part of the anxiety the first time. I didn't want to be that person who was like, Are you sitting on the couch? Why are you sitting on the couch? <laughs> oh no, come over here. Not, don't stand on the carpet. Get over here. Do you have to go to the bathroom? It was a, really stressful way to live for a little while. So I'm a believer in pull-ups because they were my own margin of error because the problems a beginner yeah. potty trainer is having is mom's problems, not their mm-hmm. problem. And mm-hmm. it's that I forgot to take them or I forgot. So yeah. one thing I would do is get a little like a kitchen timer and I would set the timer for like 15 minutes. I'll tell you a secret about this. But anyways, I would set the timer and so when the when it would go off, I would tell them when the timer goes off, it's, uh, what is it? What are you pointing out here? What is that here? bird sitting on? Oh, that is so it's weird. It's sitting on like, it's a wire. It's got to be a wire. I don't see it. There is a. That's it, really weird. It is a wire. <laughs> My word. There it's is like a, a. Where? It's like a bird was just sitting up in the sky, just Mid-air. doing nothing. How weird. I see no wire at yeah, all. We just saw I it. see no poles. I can see the wire. Can you? Yeah. But it is really weirdly camouflaged. So, anyways, we what I was going to say, I like when we have those sorts of side. No one's... <laughs> nobody cares what we're seeing that fascinates us. <laughs> so, what I was going to say is that 
I would turn the timer on and I would just say when the timer goes off, that we just called it the potty clock. When the timer yeah. goes off, we have to go try to go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that was less me nagging them incessantly. Yeah. With like, well, do yeah. you have to go? You might have to go. But when, you know. So, but I will tell you that the secret to that is that they won't have to go the first time. They won't have to go the second time. The third time, you're like, it's been 45 minutes. I'm sure you could go to the bathroom. They won't have to go. And right after that is when they have the accident. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's how, that's how that pans out. Always. But then the other thing I would just say is being really encouraging when they're having success and no big deal about the mistakes because yeah. we, that's what I thought pull-ups were good for is they enabled me to not feel like it was a big deal either. Like to just yeah. be, to, to not have me fighting the flesh about the mess that that's they were true. making. It was just better to be like, yeah, you I know. don't actually remember my feelings about pull-ups. I use them sometimes. I don't know. I honestly, there, and I will say something, and this is way more stepping on other people's toes. Okay, step. Let me go in and step. When I said that neither of us care very much about potty training, then I'm going to come out with a hard line <laughs> about potty training. <laughs> I'm going to be like, I have, I'm not one of those people who has strong feelings. Here I go rejecting your plans. Here's what I, I'm not a fan of the just have your kid be naked all day. No. I, and the reason is for lots of reasons, but especially when you have other children, mm-hmm. I I just think that there's a real element that we are trying to teach them in a step up in dignity from yep. the diapers and yep. not a step down in dignity from the diapers. Yeah. Because when you have a diaper on, you're decent. Yep. You know, <laughs> when, you're, when your mom is making you be nude all day. To what end? Like, what are we doing? And I and I and so I'm not a fan of that. And I'm and it wouldn't be. I, I don't never, feel as averse to it if it is your first child and I you're. Don't, I don't know even why then, though. I don't well, know what it helps. The thought is that they're going to. Um, I think the idea is it helps them much more quickly understand what's happening. Uh, really? With their yeah, because they well, they're used to not really seeing it. But the point, the point that I'd like to make here is that I'm not a fan of that. Even though people swear by that method, I don't like it for other reasons. Yeah, I just feel like we always tried, even when our kids were little enough that it didn't matter, to still be teaching them about modesty and decency and everything else. And I just feel and like... And to be respecting them yeah. in the way... So, like, yeah. you, you respect them in the way that when you discipline them, you would not you would not rebuke them in front of all of the children or have a big talk with them. And, like, you give them the dignity of a private discussion about yeah. something that you're concerned about. You don't yeah. just... You, there's a way in which we try to keep a lot more. Yeah. And I have to say that I this is off the potty training, but I mean, there are things we would say to one child in private that we would never say to them about no. themselves in front of the siblings. Nope. And a big part of the reason for that, it's kind of, it's mentioned in Narnia a lot where he says, it's not your story. Totally. Right. And that in part of building sibling loyalty and stuff is to not have everyone in the habit of thinking that what we do is criticize each other and no. be this way. Plus um, I think it's super important that your kids know that you would never talk in a disparaging or unkind or embarrassing way about them to anybody. And the thing is, is if you, you're showing them that if if you act that way within the privacy of your own home with your own family members, then of course they would never think you would be out talking about them at the ladies Bible study or to all your friends at church or whatever it is. I I just think, yeah, it's really important that your kids know that you have their backs and there are so many ways that moms just basically say the opposite. I saw something that was well off. I don't even know where it was, but it was a mom, like a FYI to all of you moms out there. Like you need to know about this. And, but, but in the like, you know the kind I'm talking about, right? Like, it'll typically be like, these apps are dangerous or something. I don't know. It was one of those, like, mom warrior sorts of oh, announcements. Sure, yeah. <laughs> but the announcement was essentially revealing to anyone on Facebook that you just caught your young teen son looking at things he should not have been. 
like humanity. Oh no. And it, and it's like I need you all to be aware that I didn't know this was possible on this app. Ah. And and I just feel like woman stuff it now. Like whatever you're doing oh here, gosh. I am ashamed of what you are doing here because <laughs> uh and it's not because there's no it's not because there shouldn't be like a reality of sin, but she was basically exposing a sexual <laughs> sin of her 12 year old uh, as a like it was sad you know you think like well yeah. how you know what when he gets Facebook someday yeah. and finds out that you did that I mean what kind of respect is that yeah, it was terrible. just embarrassing no and telling I feel like there's a there's a funny line that I don't know I think if you're paying attention to it you know right where it is actually which is you can tell hilarious stories about your toddler. Well, we clearly like we do to it. tell those. We do. Yeah. But there's also, there comes a moment where it's a hilarious story, but your child would be really embarrassed yeah, yeah. to know that you were out telling the story. And so it's just, it's just basic golden rule. Like, yeah. would you enjoy it if your mother or your husband or your sister or whoever started telling your less favorite stories to everyone you know yeah no you don't want that so, so don't I guess but kids. I think that that it's a much earlier edition when it's the potty training thing but it's like sort of like for the effect mm-hmm. of just mm-hmm. getting it done we don't care what it costs the child yeah. even if they don't know what they're I think that goes for even if it's it's a thing I feel whatever sort of discipline also like that's a thing that whatever it was we tried to have it just be between you and the child and it's not always possible right. you're on a road trip somebody's being a little turkey in the way back well the but way back. but even like that was you just part have of the to thing. say like hey schwartz in the back yeah you're gonna Knock be done off. now you're gonna Knock be done now yeah. and and some of that's okay because we do believe that you know, your, the, your the apology needs to be as needs public be, as the sin. Yeah, as public as the sin. So sometimes but even the it's re- okay. But, but even the apology is not the same thing as the rebuke. No. So, for instance, at our house, if so, we would take the kid back to talk with them, and then they would come out to put it right. But it would not be that whoever was wronged got to be there for the whole. No. Like, what, how did no. they get, how bad did they get in trouble? What no. level of, you know, that's just not their and concern. Even, you know, like, sometimes, okay, so you're on a road trip and things There's are, another bird on the way. Oh, man. <laughs> things are getting sniffy in the back seat, let's say. Occasionally, you know, you can, there's a lot you can just do with small tune-ups as you're on the road. But yep. sometimes you pull it over. You're just, there you are. You're on the side of the road. <laughs> Having to deal with the we sins. Had, we had a on an eventful trip to the Oregon coast. Oh my land! One time, we it was it took us eleven hours to get there. Which well, it just takes eleven hours. That's how long it takes. The deadline take eleven hours, and it probably took us longer than eleven <laughs> hours. Uh, well, however, it was it was a very long time in the minivan, and the twins were babies, so it was the mm-hmm. twins and car seats. And then behind them, the two girls in car seats. So it was like a, a barrage of car seats. But with the, what would have been, the twins were like eight months. So it would have been a three-year-old and a yeah. two-year-old in the back. And we went to the Oregon coast. And then, and on the way, I hit a woman. That was, that was my, oh, yeah. that was a oh, peak yeah. moment where I found out I don't mind physical confrontations. <laughs> Uh, she actually she it wasn't it was weird she must have been on drugs of some kind she was literally like foaming at the mouth Mm -hmm. and she came up to our she looked really glassy eyed and weird and she wanted to get in the van with us and Luke was like sorry no we're not giving you a ride um and it was just to all you who were worried about what was happening there there were other there was it was not a place where there was no civilization it was not up to us to put her in the back with the babies right you know and um anyways she wanted to ride and luke said no and then she just kind of kept coming towards us so luke is trying to buckle somebody into their car seat while using his body to block the opening Mm -hmm. but she is defying all personal space (laughs) boundaries and coming up 
right up against him. So he's stretched into the back of the van and she reaches over his back to touch Titus's head. Titus was in the car seat. Uh-huh. At which time I sl- <laughs> slapped her hand away <laughs> and said, what are you doing? <laughs> and then Luke got back out, slammed the door, <laughs> ran around, jumped to the driver's side while she stood up next to my window cussing me out. Oh no. It was a little unnerving. Anyways, <laughs> we got then we got all the way to the Oregon coast. And then we were there for like a week with all the cousins. So nothing but eating Oreos when no one noticed you were getting them. <laughs> Playing on the beach and staying up too late. Like physical labor. Staying up too late. Eating, you know, it yeah. was like on the way back. There weren't any wheels on our <laughs> wagon. We were just well past to the fried point. Like two, a two-year-old, a three-year-old, and the two babies. And so we get, we get in the car in the minivan. And it is like in the driveway of the house we're leaving, we're having some kind of a scene that is worse than we've ever had with the Mm. kids. You know, it's like, Mm -hmm. it's like things are really (laughs) wrong (laughs) and we got that dealt with. We drive, I don't know, 30 or 40 feet. We're having (laughs) another huge meltdown and then we get on the road both babies are screaming at the top of their lungs and then behind them the two toddlers are fighting (laughs) two screaming infants and two squabbling toddlers and so it felt like it felt like every quarter mile we're pulling over and I'm climbing into the back and trying to like all right say Daphne I'm sorry for being rude and keep your hands to yourself and then and then I get all the way back up to the front and sit out of there you'd hear it erupting in the back but all over screaming infants so by the time we get to Portland, which is how far was it to Portland? Well, it's a little ways. I mean, it's a couple, maybe an hour and a half or yeah, something. Maybe. By the time we got to Portland, I was just like ready to join the fracas in the back. <laughs> and because I'm, I'm telling Luke, I don't think we can go further. Like we just yeah. have to stop. We can't leave. Mm-hmm. We're not going to be allowed to drive further mm-hmm. than Portland because this is an untenable situation <laughs> in the minivan. And the, and at one point, I don't remember who did it. One of the toddler girls ripped a chunk of hair out of the other one's head. <laughs> and they were not side by side. They were like, must have been reaching across the chasm to, to annoy each other. And, and it was just like, you have got... Oh, to be kidding boy. us. So we did the mm-hmm. thing, like what you have to do with your smartphone where you give it a hard recharge. Like <laughs> we we stopped at a Safeway and we got in because I think the twins managed to actually be still crying that whole way. Like <laughs> they were still loud and crying. I'm sure that the girls in the back were not giving them the feeling it was safe to stop <laughs> crying. So we reached the Safeway in Portland and where we stop and we separate everyone into carts and we went inside and we goofed off in the Safeway in Portland like like pushing them in the cart and talking to them like there was some yeah discipline that had to take place and then we bought everyone like new sippy cups and like something I don't know. I feel like we got the twins each a new car seat toy. We got us coffee. We were like, let's all pretend that we can do this. And then, <laughs> but, but when we got back to the car, the babies went to sleep. And the, you know, it was yeah. like, we got, once we finished, at, at Safeway, it became a tenable thing that we yeah. could go home. But yeah. up until then, I was like, <laughs> we aren't allowed to travel. No, it's not working. No. Well, on that same trip, I remember us trying to make just one little drive from Tillamook back to our cabin, which shouldn't have taken that long, I don't think. But we had to pull over, I don't even know how many times, for various and sundry disciplines but it was because everyone was little everyone was like under eight oh they were a wee dinks the thing that was happening is we were breaking alliances between cousins because yeah we were having a weird problem where 
they were picking on this trip. They were picking favorite cousins. Yeah. And they couldn't stop themselves from picking favorite no, cousins. No, it was like a hot trend. And so we were like, no, no, we're not doing that. We're not having a favorite cousin. And then we'd be, we'd get on the road and there would be sort of a little mutter from the back. But I am Lucy's favorite <laughs> or something. And so it was just. Nothing you say can <laughs> stop the truth. <laughs> or, well. She does like me more than you. <laughs> and so we had to keep on. It was like it had turned into this full-on unstoppable also, situation. Also during that trip, mom sewed skirts for all the girls to wear. <laughs> and so mom wanted a photo shoot of all the girls oh, in the skirts. And one of my girls And was one of bad. Becca's girls. But I don't took, know who. I know who. Was it Hero? We're going to keep it keep it secret Speaking who did it talking it about was it was children. bell it was bell because was you can tell because when you go look at those photos oh. bell is in none of them because <laughs> bell was in like an hour and a half conference <laughs> with her dad and then she would, she would be periodically brought out in her skirt where she would then make a total <laughs> skunk face <laughs> <laughs> and then she would get taken away again to talk more about the issues. And then it would be like 30 minutes later, here it comes, here they come. And oh, then, and then I just love it because we have a whole series of photos in England that Hero is missing from because she's <laughs> off in the corner with Ben. And it's so funny. And there's these, and she's got this little fat <laughs> face of sin. And he's hunkered over speaking to her in the corner of the church so there's like the all the photos of um so the the uh church where uh king alfred was supposed to have baptized guthrum in this very font and so we're there to see the font everyone's having a great time except in the lurking in the back we can see Ben and Hero in conference. <laughs> but it's, it's really great. But the thing is, what was I trying... How did we get here? Oh, I was just saying that, like, even if... Even if it's a thing like that where you have to keep on pulling over to deal with the issues, oftentimes it'd be like, okay, you need to hop out and we're going to have a talk over here on the side of the road. And I didn't do that. Not when they were two and three. No, in the but back. they're two and three. But I'm just saying, like, if we're talking about the eight and nine year olds. Oh yeah, no, you just have a speak it's in like, private. Okay, you know what? We're gonna pull over. The or, family will sit here and and hum. Or sometimes while... we'll say, just put a bookmark on that, and we're gonna talk about it when we get yeah, home. Like yeah, I'm gonna but talk if with you've you. You've got about eleven that. hours ahead in the car. It's like let's let's right. deal with it absolutely. Now. Yeah, I just feel like yeah, having um. Having some measure of dignity for I think one of our best, I, we've maybe told this, but this is about my husband, Luke, the patron saint of children in distress at some time during Sabbath when Belle wouldn't eat her hamburger <laughs> and Belle kept getting taken away to speak about it. But there's a lot of people at Sabbath. Well, but see, and this in was, the course of the Belle time, was probably three. You think? Oh yeah. And in the course of the time where, where Belle would not take a bite. So it was like an untouched burger no. and then, also ben wasn't having ha having time to eat his burger either i think because he spent the whole time taking probably. bell back and forth to the bathroom yeah. to have but in the more course of, of this time where other people didn't notice what was happening it turned into the time where we were clearing the table and luke ate bell's burger <laughs> <laughs> and so at some point she came out to face it again and, and the <laughs> lord had withdrawn the affliction <laughs> <laughs> we like to hope that that was the moment where she was ready to submit. We are, we're sure she was. Either but, way, it was like a last minute. But it's pardon. always. I think it's very important. We didn't really mean to go here with well, our talk. Apparently, but, that's what we but do. The thing is, is I think it's always important that you win the battle. And the battle may seem long un and tedious. Yeah, it may seem like there's no hope in sight. And it may seem like you've been at this and for this two hours and 17 minutes. But well, because you have. Because you have. Yeah. And you, you, have. you might be regretting now that you picked the battle. Yes. But you might be learning wisdom about when to not tell your child to say hi to someone <laughs> in the future. <laughs> but having picked the battle... It is very important that you win it. Yeah, because it's because kids important. pick up on that real fast. No, because if they if they learn that by a mere, you know, exerting of the will for two hours and seventeen minutes they can win, 
They'll do it. That's what they'll do. And then they'll they'll <laughs> test themselves to see if they could make it three hours. <laughs> Maybe three and eleven yeah. minutes. And so, so one thing that I would say about this, and this is just you know, as a mother of seven children, who I'm happy to say are fun to be around. Yeah. With not that I am claiming without errors in judgment or <laughs> or raucousness or ample times things that we have to correct or sure. like I, I'm not in no way saying that we have a flawless situation but I'm just telling you that I know what it is to deal with the problems that children present yeah I've been there and I've done that mm. and the most common thing I see happening all the time with parents of toddlers is parents losing petty battles over and over and over and yep. over and over yep. and and just and almost not noticing that they're losing it right like they don't seem they just move on yeah. they just let a kid do something evil can evil at them and then they just overlook it and I, and the thing is is that that's not your job to no. ignore their failings as a toddler. Your job no. is to have them be a joyful human. And yeah. I remember one time when my girls, the older two were, I mean, I don't know how big they were. It was probably around the time they were pulling each other's hair out. Cause, <laughs> but we actually did a full demonstration of like, we drew a picture of a flower, you know, like, and I was explaining to him, they were a little older than that. But I, where we were talking about how sweet and fun they are and how much we enjoy them and this mm -hmm. is beautiful, etc. And then we drew a big black thistle yeah. and I put it in front of it. You know, like I think we cut it out of black paper. I don't know what. But where you could no longer see the flower. Yeah. And I'm like, this is your fussy attitude. Mm -hmm. Like you are, it's in the reality is as a parent there, are, you know, exactly what I'm talking about because you know, a personality of your baby that is cute and fun and funny and joy. Like a, you, yep. you know, that personality that you love and that you delight in and that then there comes a time when your child is actually not being pleasant to be around. Like they're not fun. They're not being funny. Right. They're always the problem. They're always dragging behind you. They're always demanding something or fussing yeah. about it. And you realize that's your problem that you didn't weed that garden. Yeah. If you can't see the delightful little person that you should be seeing, then you're not in fellowship with your child in a way that you should be. Yeah. And that you and have to is, go in and be like, and, and more times than I could recount, I have, we've had team meetings where I have apologized to children for letting something go to the point right. that this is actually something we have to deal with now. Right. And the thing is, is you are deciding what will get set in concrete in your child. Right. Because there comes a time that the flower actually can get choked out. Yep. Like the personality is the thistles now. Right. The garden is the thistles because you have not let the crop, the beautiful things actually bloom right. because they're being eaten alive by, yep. by the vices that are yep. growing in your and child. And sadly, the vices are coming from within your child. Oh yeah. But, and original yeah. sin is there flourishing along and, and really it is your job to, to teach your children how to deal with the original 100%. sin that will be afflicting them throughout the rest of their lives. And if you're teaching them, well, if you just persist in sin long enough, then you'll win. If you persist in fussing all the time, then, then eventually you'll get what you want. Or what more often happens is that your mom starts parenting you in frustration and disgust rather yeah. than in love and compassion and like because the reality is none of us can put up with a self-indulgent toddler for very long. No. So when <laughs> when it like what ends up happening is that you snap at your children, then you know you have sin that has to be confessed. So then you're apologizing and they're still living in sin. Or you snap, then you feel guilty, so then you basically then you reward indulge in your the child. Sin. Yeah, they you... fuss for four hours about wanting to get a green ball, and then finally you yell, "You're never getting a green ball!" And then you say, "I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Let's go get you a green ball." And right. it's like that's the problem right there is right. that it's not it's your job to manage both your own emotions and sinful responses and your child's. Yep, and that's a 
that's a and it's a high and lonely calling. It's a hard job, but it's so worth your time when they're <laughs> toddlers. And that's what I have to say. If if I I'm not trying to sound too serious about this, but seriously, it is a grief to me when I see Christian parents apparently not noticing what they're letting go. Right. Because you, it is like, oh my goodness. You are making a really unfun time for all of well, you. Well, there's one. Ben told this story a while ago, and I admit that I do not remember it. So, I just it. He remembers it though, and it was with Knox, who was amazingly, amazingly headstrong and had stamina for miles. Yeah, so that like, was Lena did that once too. Once he dug in, he was in, and so Luke it was called a it thing. the fudge ribbon of sin. Like you're, <laughs> you're scooping ice cream, and when you hit the fudge, it just you're like, let's just get that out. Nope, it keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. <laughs> and so, I remember it like like having a showdown with Knox. You just didn't know if you were going to come out the other end of that tunnel. And, it might be six weeks. Yeah, it might be, yeah. <laughs> and I think this was one that maybe I had started. I had not won through to success. Ben got home from work, took over for me or something. Mm-hmm. Like, or maybe not. I don't know. But it was just, it had been lengthy, a long one. And and Knox, I know what house we were living in. So he was not, he was about just, just two, I think. So yeah. he was a little wee tot with an amazing amount of endurance. And so anyhow, uh, Ben was back there with him in the bedroom. I was out in the living room having all kinds of, you know how it is. You're, you're out there thinking, Oh no. Oh dear. Oh my. Oh gosh. Oh heaven. What have we done? Maybe yeah. he doesn't know he I'm doesn't his mother. Know. Maybe he, he didn't know I'm his mom. He doesn't know how to say I'm sorry anymore. He's yeah. refusing to what say I'm he, sorry because what if he, he forgot. forgot. Yeah. He doesn't know he has yeah. that skill. But anyway, Ben, um, took a break. He came out for a minute to like, get a glass of water or something go back Mm. in there because it was like it was like going back in and he came out and he said that he looked at me and I was had that face on Mm -hmm. and he was feeling like oh dear because now I'm gonna have to get Becca through this one also and I said to him I said you had better win this (laughs) he was like I will. Thanks. I'm and, going back and in. Back in. But the, I do think that toddlers that's... are making a run all the time for which of us is more stubborn. Yeah. Which of us is the boss? And and, and you have they have to run into a concrete wall of parent yeah, that yeah. says there is no hope no. for you that and, you will overcome. And this. the thing is, is that we have. And I want to clarify that I do not mean anything mean about that. I mean, like, it is not a mean parenting no. thing to be immovable. No. It is the most kind, gracious thing you can do for your children. And it makes children who are so confident in you and secure. Yeah, and totally. they love it. Because they're all trying to become Napoleon. And, and so, they don't really and want you don't to be want, that. And Well, and you don't want them to be no. that. And the whole thing would be terrible. So, anyway, all I'm saying is that you as a mom can also sabotage your husband's efforts to do this because like, give me that child yeah or you don't understand or you can jump in the way to ensure that your toddler wins instead of your husband yeah i like that grandpa always said that when people are like well how do i know if my child is understanding any you know like how do i know and he said well if they're old enough to know that screaming will get them something yep they're old enough to know that screaming won't get them something <laughs> that they, they wanted can, or that screaming will get them something they didn't want. Like if they're, <laughs> they're old enough, they understand cause, cause and effect. effect. They understand <laughs> it. They're screaming because someone else got the toy and that's not because they're dumb. Yep. They're smart. And yep. that's how they did that. So yep. all of this is to say that just, it is so important to win those Stay battles. Stay in the battle. And I will say for and us, be for us, the earliest battles with our baby, it was always with little baby fat toddlers and onesies who are trying <laughs> to throw a back arching, you know, yeah. screamer pants fit to get put down. <laughs> and you feel like the biggest nincompoop in the world that you're like, I shall be stronger than you. And they're like, no, you won't. Ah! And anyways, we would just, I would just sit and hold them on your lap and try to not be, we did not, we would just hold them until they were ready to be obedient. 
And yeah. I'll tell you, 45 minutes into holding a child that's trying to arch their back out of the situation <laughs> does make you feel like a lunatic. Like, you do <laughs> feel like they can't understand, they can't know, and then all of a sudden, they'll stop. And, and you're then, like, are you ready to obey mama? And they're like, yes. <laughs> and you say, can you say sorry, mama? They're like, sorry, mama. <laughs> and, then, and then all of a sudden, out blossoms yeah. that darling person that you loved. Like the there is sun no, shines through the clouds. Right. So if your baby is characterized by that kind of like kicking, scratching, biting, thrashing <laughs> characteristics yeah. you can win like you can yeah. win and see that joyful person again yeah although if you're if you have let's say that you have gotten yourself into a scene where you've not been winning and yeah. the, well. the child does think of themselves as napoleon of the universe yeah. right now it's gonna be rough you're, it's gonna be rough and but you can still do it but i wouldn't pick every battle every time just no. start small. Actually, start small. That's the thing with pottery. Um, because because when it's on the wheel, if you try to exert pressure in every, like, all around it, it just blows off the wheel. Like, you cannot do uh-huh. that. You exert pressure in one place, and yep. it shapes the whole thing. Yep. And so, if it's, like, a nuance, like, if you see this child has got a funky thing going on, I you look for the place where you can exert pressure that is clear and yeah. concise, so and then you win there, and that that winning <clears throat> has impact everywhere. Well, oftentimes, partic- I think sometimes with girls, but any any kind of child can do this. But but some kids, when they sin, they sin boldly. They just do it, and you right. know it, and it's real obvious. And then there's then there's girls that go into the sort of manipulative, funky, fussy times that you can't. Yeah, something's off. They're being a stinker, but you can't. There's no like one thing that you get. There's no handles really. So whenever we found ourselves with a situation of that description, or let's say you're out with them somewhere and you can't really deal with things, the lucky thing is is that that sin's not going to go away in the 15 minutes. It will be before you get mm-hmm. home or whatever. Yeah. And when you get home, you can just you can just draw a little line in the sand and yeah, say you just say, "Hey, you say, see that line? I don't want you to go across that." And if your kid is in a finky or sin, they they'll won't. just they'll stomp like, right well, across well, well. it. <laughs> or you say something like, <laughs> "Call them out and say, hey, come over here for a minute." Yeah, and, and if they and flop, if they go like a jelly and <laughs> collapse, and then, then you say, "Oh, look at you disobeying, Mama!" Like, right. let's have another chance, and I want to see good obeying. Yeah. Like, and a, then you have something then, clear, and then it's just clear as clear can be, which is what yeah. you, we always do if a kid is being really fussy or grumpy. Is we don't say you may not be fussy or you may not yes. be grumpy. We say, "Show me your cheerful face." Right. Blow it out. Show me your cheerful face. Right. Say, thank you, Mama, for dinner. Like, right. give them an objective thing so that if they disobey, they're clearly disobeying. You're not trying to get them in trouble for feeling sad or for no. feeling... You don't do that. Aim for the clear the clear things. So, yeah. so after that derailment from potty training, we need to go, <laughs> don't we? Probably. Uh, so... I have um, a tip this time. Do you? Uh, we've probably tipped this tip before. All right. Well, actually, I, let's just say this whole podcast was a big, long tip session. It's true. Trust big potties. Just that's Trust one of them. our tips. Yeah. No, I was going to say the tip is using painter's drop cloths for table cloths because oh, yeah, that you is can smart. do it. And if you buy them, they're like really stiff and treated canvas or whatever, mm-hmm. but they're hemmed. And if you get one of the hall runners, it will fit two six foot tables end to end like you can get a 12 foot tablecloth that will go it comes off like canvas or something well and then i will i will add the quibble they are not beautifully hemmed no not at all probably no. about as good as my napkins no but it's like you, it's but like then, big, thick twiny kind of thread and it's like so it can be like dark brown or kind of orangey okay. depending on what you get well not all of them but then but one thing that you can do is take the drop cloth Put it in your washing machine with like a ton of bleach and let it sit for like three hours or something. Yeah. And 
in hot water and bleach and then wash it a bunch and it comes out like a softy cotton yeah. almost a linen look it yeah. it but it's and it works for tablecloths yeah you're right and i have even used them for um curtains also because they come in such interesting different uh but they're lengths. big and so Pieces they're big of fabric. and they're cheap yeah. and they're kind of a cool neutrally thing i have a stack of them that i had as if you bleach them, some of them will go white them almost like cupboard yeah cu- i used them as cupboards i said <laughs> i didn't guys in I her hobo days where she tied it on a stick <laughs> i used them as curtains but um <laughs> i've had to make do in my kitchen <laughs> there was that oh, one phase where i only made soup and well, a frisbee <laughs> Well, no, my tip is um, I have been every so often buying myself a nice makeup brush. Like you don't want to spend yeah. you don't want to spend like a lot of money on makeup brushes all in one fell swoop. But if you buy them one at a time, <laughs> then it, it then feels, no one knows the difference. It feels less aggressive, and so you know I it makes a difference. I really enjoy having. It's good. A few nice makeup brushes. Well, good for I you. I recommend that. All and right. A big fat fluffy one for foundation. Okay. It turns out that's really nice. All right. Well, that's what I have. That's what we got for you, folks. Guys, have Until fun. Until next time. Win the battles. Win them. Bye. <laughs>you think of yourself now and then in four years time what do you want yourself to look like and is the education that you're considering going to help you get to that place when you're a student you want to become like your teacher you're going to become like your teacher looking at nsa beforehand i knew i wanted to become like the men who are teaching here fireman husband father doctor no matter where you want to go NSA is just such good preparation for the person that you want to be. If you want to be an effective Christian, you need to be able to lead and shape culture. If you want to do that, no matter what your occupation is, you need to shape yourself, um, prepare yourself as a person for that job. And liberal arts is, I think, the best education you can have for that. To learn more, check us out online at nsa.edu.